and welcome to Amethyst Star Crafting. My name is Jane Ormark and I'm a UK independent stamping up demonstrator. And today we're looking at breathtaking bouquet. Now this is a lovely large image, floral, roses, um, all sorts of flowers, leaves and things and it's a really large stamp. Now when you come to colouring, if you are an avid colourist, it's absolutely beautiful to colour. But because it's such a large image, it can be a little bit um, overwhelming. So I thought we'd do a card today where it shows some colouring, but not all of it. And it's called a... Um, a Oh, I can't think of the name of it. It's um, it's a certain type of technique where you just do a little image um, of it. So the easiest way to deal with a stamp of this size is to use a positioning tool. The Stamparatus, absolutely perfect. I've already set it up on here to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to put the case underneath because then it helps to just balance it down on here. And I have taken... Because this fills up such a large area, I have taken a piece of cardstock which is a lot bigger so that we can get the magnet down and we can stamp it a few times to get a really dark image. Now, this is a sheet of A4 cardstock just cut in half. And the pieces that are left over, we can do other things with. But I wanted that size because then the magnet goes down. This fits perfectly. There's enough room to cut it down. So, taking good black ink, we are just going to ink it up. And because it's a large image, you need to ink it right the way round. And you might find that you need to stamp it a couple of times. So first time down it's a large surface area so we go around all your sides and I found that the Stamparatus is perfect for this because as I say if you miss some little pieces out which it's very easy to do when it's a stamp this size and if you have hands like me which are a bit arthritic when I open it up you can see there's some pieces down there that we've missed so I can go down again and I know that's literally just because I haven't covered that that's almost done on there so I want it just a little bit darker so I'm going to ink it up again and again go all over the area particularly around those little edge pieces and because we've got it well put down with the magnet it means that we can come across and do it again and as I say if you've got good strong hands then you probably only need to do it once. As I say, my hands aren't particularly strong, so I need to do it twice. And I still need to do it just in on this little piece here. So I'm just giving it a little bit of an extra press down on that bit. And then we've got a beautiful image on there. And that's that works absolutely perfectly. Now, the Simply Chamois is the best tool to clean this up because you can literally just go right over the area with the Simply Chamois and clean it up nicely. And as I say, you're not going to get a larger, this is what they call a background stamp. It is about the biggest one you want. Um, you can cut any of these images down. So if you, um, if you see that there's these beautiful flowers on there and you think oh actually I think I might just cut those down you can do that as well so um, I will show you I'm just going to move this out of the way because we don't want that anymore at the moment but you can see you've now got your image which is all of the size of this and we can then cut it down I am going to show you you can make so these were just the flower images which I then just fussy cut round and you can obviously you know you can make flowers on their own just using those pieces so you can do quite a few bits and pieces with it you see that one on there make a lovely little trio together 
um, you know, those sorts of together. So you don't have to use the whole thing if you don't want to. OK, so what I've done with this is I've cut it down to the card size that I wanted. And I wanted this to go on with a small black mat. So I've cut it down for me to um, five and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. OK, so we then can take and I will show you because I've done one and I'm going to do another one with you now. If you take these are our um, stitched shaped dies. If you take, for example, right, this is the largest one. You could put the largest one in the middle and just die cut that out. And then you've got that as the... Um, the focal image you can take two smaller ones and you could cut out for example one like that one like that and if you really don't want to do a huge amount of coloring you could take the smallest one and you could cut out just a piece like that and just sort of put it over um, the image that you want and you're then just literally going to die cut it out because then that gives you the spotlight that you want and means that you don't have to worry about colouring too much. So um, I'm going to take this one out of the side because I have prepared one earlier. And so this one I have already, to save a little bit of time, I have mounted it on a border of black cardstock which is just an eighth of an inch wider. And so this is the circle so when you take it out you can see all you're having to worry about is to colour this image here. So we don't have to worry about colouring the whole thing. So I think I'm going to do this in some quite sort of bright colours, I think. Um, I've got rich razzleberries. And then I've also got, because um, you know me and purples, I do like purples. Uh, we've got the Highland Heather. So I think I'm going to do this rose as a deep purple rose. So um, very simply on here... Um, and as I say, I do sometimes struggle with the lids because of my hands. Um, we're just going to do this very simply. So all I'm going to do here is to just take some dark areas in. Very sort of simple way of colouring it through. So we're just going around the outside pieces here which would just give that sort of bit of shadowing. I'm going to just do that bit to start off with. So, and this is the light one, and I can do that with the wider nib, I think. And we're just going to, so this is our rich raspberry. And as I say, you can spend hours and hours colouring. Um, and sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't have quite as much patience um, or time on my hand. So this is a way of doing it where you're not concentrating on colouring the whole thing. You're just colouring a small part of it. Now I'm just going to go round on here. And I should do my dark bit in afterwards, I think, so I can then see where I'm going. And I'm turning round as I go because then I can see exactly where the image comes. But you can see if you're doing the whole thing, um, it will take you several hours. If you're just doing one piece like this, it doesn't take you quite as much time. So let's just... Going round on here. I always tend to turn my card when I'm doing it. There's probably no right or wrong with it. And I need to have a look at this on here to just see whether that comes. It does come right up out. So these are part of 
me see on this one. I want to see whether that outside petal is part of... Oh, that's that one down on there. Oh, no, that comes in on that flower, so it's not part of that one. Okay, fine. So it's worth giving a little check from time to time to make sure that you're just colouring the, the one that you want and you're not going over into one of the other flowers. So we're just going to take it round to there. So that's the outside. And then, as I say, we can colour in the inside quite quickly. I say, when you're doing it, you will obviously spend more time than me because I'm just doing it quickly to just show you as an example. So let's just take it round. In on here. got the center part of the rose so then I go in with the dark I'm using the bullet nib for this one and I literally just sort of draw around where I would say that there was some shadowing coming so where the leaves sort of meet with the others you get a little bit of what you'd call shadowing in there so and by turning it you tend to sort of get it at the right the right area um, and as I say I am no expert at colouring at all I just enjoy it a little bit and it's something that as I say if you're looking to practice without being totally overwhelmed this is a lovely image to practice and as I say by cutting it or just taking a spotlight from it it then, as I say, it's not quite so overwhelming because I must admit sometimes you look at things and you go, oh my goodness, I don't think I'll manage all of that. And um, whereas this just gives you just that little bit where it's not too overwhelming. So I'm just taking these little bits on here, which are sort of darker in the middle. And then we can take the, whoops, and pushing the lids in then we can take the pail again and just sort of blend it in a bit where those bits are that we started so blend those in and as I say as it dries it will become paler and you can have it where you want right that'll do for that for now I know I've got some little bits up on here that really should just have a little bit of dark in. It's one of those things, you look at it and then you go, oh dear, that's not very good. So I said, I do struggle sometimes with the blends because they don't, um, some of the bottoms come off of them. I'm just going to do these bits. Right, we'll just have that on, oops, a little bit on there because that's gonna be just a little bit dark as well. So I'll have that on there, see if I can get this one out without pulling the top off it. There we are. Now once that starts drying, it look a lot better. Now we want this little flower, I need to start with a yellow centre. So I've got our Daffodil Delight, with a bit of luck. And we can just literally take the centre of that in. like that and we've got some other little sort of flowery things in here haven't we I'm just going to do just those little centers of those while I'm at it but I don't think I've got any oh there's a little centerpiece in here as well I don't think I've got any leaves in on this bit which is quite fun so that can go back in there and then this one is going to be in the um, the purple so make sure that's the dark yes dark highland heather, heather on this one so on this one all I'm doing is taking up where the um, sort of lines are in on this one I'm 
this just a little bit on this one. Like that. And then we can take the pail. can use that with the larger one. Just blend that through. Bottom. Go quite nicely together. It almost looks like one of those pansies. There we are. That'll go in on there. And then these little flowers here, again, I'm just going to tuck it back in here so I can see on the larger image. So we'll take that one. It's going to come there. That's going to come there. So these are, I think I'm going to do these in just a very pale blue because I think that that will pick those up quite nicely. So we'll just do this bit in, get it in on there. So those are going to be blue, those are going to be blue. So let's just give those bit on there. You can have that little piece on there like that. And then this one. It's in on there. To work out where that stalk is coming in, it's in this bit. Got a little tiny bit of a leaf on there. Take it round on there. And as I say, you can fast forward this if he wants. This just shows how you can fairly simply colour something in without spending too much time. I would probably use my aqua painter more than anything else because I must admit I do um, find using the aqua painter is a lot easier on a lot of things. Okay, so this is going to have... That's a little bit of that one on there. So that's going to be a little bit of this one. And this is where when you put it together, you can actually see where you've got different things coming up. So this one is part of that little flower. So we'll just have that in on there. I hope that's the light one. It might have been the dark, but never mind. Is that the dark? No, it was the light. That's fine. And then this little bit up on here, so I'm putting it back in again. So I've got that on there, that's there. Ah, those are little leaves, so we need a little bit of green. Let's have a bit of, um, I might have light granny apple because that's quite just a little bit of colour in there. So those are little leaves on that bit. So let's just colour those in. a leaf on there so that's then going to go in on let's make sure I've got the center of that one in that those around and then we've just got on this one and this one are the um, the bottom of these whatever these flowers are um, what color should we have those um, I could do them pink, couldn't I? Or I could do them, I think I'm going to do them orange, actually. Because um, that will go in as well. It's just a bit of something that's a bit brighter. That's going to pull the middle out of that one. I don't know whether I've got any orange left in there, actually. Um, shall I have it? I might have it in mint macaron, actually. Just something that's really sort of paler on there. So that's these little bits on here, which come out here. I think they're sort of hyacinthy type things. Not really into the names of my flowers very much, but now did that come in on? Yes, those bits and that bit.
that's green that's that coloring on there got a tiny weeny weeny little bit of green on there now this one's going to be the same color on the other side as well so that's this bit And I'm not going to add any extra sort of colouring onto here, I don't think. Let's see if that comes in onto there. Yes, it does. That'll work, I think. It's a little bit of purple that we missed out on this one. And this is where, as I say, when you put it in, because not all of the image is the easiest to see, it's quite good that you can just sort of take it through and there was that tiny little weeny bit of green leaf we missed Let's see if I can get that out which is just on there okay so you can see by just using I've just used some of our blends but you can then have this spotlight where you're not spending all your time filling the whole thing in you're just doing a little bit and then you can put that in. Now I'm just going to take some wet glue um, and just put this on here. And as I say, you can do the size of spotlight that you want. Um, you could also wash the back and not leave it just black and white. Um, but it does mean that you can make a pretty card without colouring in the whole thing. Now I've got to make sure that I've got these bits lined up so I tend to put it in where I know that there's a line on there and in on the top then put it into place and then just smooth it round and as I say you then have a rather nice spotlight on there right in the centre of that one. I've taken the sentiment from the Where is it? This set, which is from the um, the poppies, Peaceful Moments. And I've chosen, you shouldn't have, but I'm glad you did, uh, as a bit of a thank you sort of card. So I thought that I would put that on there. I've just done a tiny, weeny little black border for it. And um, so rather than picking up any of the colours with the border on this, I've chosen to do it in black because a lot of the um, image is going to be black and white. And then we can just put this in just down on the bottom. Where you want like that. And then you can put it onto... Um, a card base of your choice. I've, this is white so let's just put it onto this card base and you can see that you've got a rather nice image. As I say I would have spent a little bit longer doing that one but you can just see by doing a silhouette you don't have to concentrate on colouring the whole thing and this is one I did earlier which I did it with the two circles. So you've got two spotlights on there. But again, it meant that I only concentrated on the two flowers. And I really liked just picking out that rose as well because I thought that that looked quite nice. So um, a fairly sort of simple card for you to do, but one that then doesn't overwhelm you with too much colouring or if you haven't got a lot of colour to time to colour in. So thank you so much for watching. Breathtaking bouquet. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye bye.